Hello and welcome to the TDD Basics course on Ionics. My name is Ilya and this is section 2 where we are going to discuss some theory behind TDD and also I am going to present you some concepts which you as a developer will probably face throughout working on many projects. So the main question is what is TDD and it means test driven development which means that you firstly write your tests and describe what your program should do and only after that you code the actual implementation so only after that you actually write the code so tests first and then your code and uh, this concept relates to the extreme programming concept uh, you may re uh, read about it on Wikipedia but all in all uh, many developers uh, call this cycle as red, green and refactor what it means is that firstly when you write your tests they of course are going to fail because uh, the actual implementation is not yet coded so your testing fails and uh, fail uh, usually involves a red uh, color so that's a red cycle uh, next you fulfill your expectations you implement some feature for which you've written your tests and that's going to be green which means that now on this step your tests are passing and also note that on this step you write only the minimum code necessary to fulfill your um, expectations to fulfill um, the feature so only very very basic code and then on step three you can refactor your code, you can do some changes to it and then proceed maybe to the next feature or run your tests again to check that after refactoring your code still works or something like that. So once again this whole concept is, mean, uh, is called red, green and refactor. Um, some developers say that writing uh, tests means of describing the code you wish you had. So firstly, once again, you describe what you would like to build and secondly, you write this code. And I understand that at first this concept may sound strange and maybe not in under all circumstances it's, uh, well, it, will, it is going to fit you, especially when you have very little time and you need to very quickly implement some feature and you simply don't have absolutely no time for testing. Maybe in this case you can skip this, but all in all a writing test is a really good practice and later we'll see why. Um, also note that usually each uh, feature of your program is covered by its own set of tests, meaning uh, that um, you cover all your program by some um, automated tests and usually those test, uh, tests are independent so they don't rely to each other, they are absolutely independent uh, but yeah, later of course you can write some tests that um, checks whether the program um, works uh, properly as the whole because of course you can write firstly some test that checks individual parts of your program but next of course you should check whether the program uh, fulfills uh, the um, expectation and all those parts of this program uh, they work together as one entity uh, let's proceed next and um, here are some benefits for test driven development of course um, first is the high code quality because when you start to write tests for your program it's very easy to find some spots that uh, well have you know it's called like code smell so your code looks not really great not in the best shape uh, especially it applies to projects that initially don't have any tests at all and you start writing those tests and you see that one of the parts of your application is very hard to test. 
it usually means uh, that the code itself is really complicated and it should be refactored somehow. Uh, so therefore the overall quality of the code um, increases, uh, which of course means that uh, maintaining this application, this project, is easier in future. Uh, also, when you have a nice uh, test suite, you can refactor uh, various parts of your application with confidence. Because otherwise, when you don't have uh, testing suite, you basically start changing some parts of your application, some code, and then you understand that you accidentally broke something, or even uh, you are changing one part of your application and another part starts uh, to work um, incorrectly. And uh, that's indeed really bad, it's very inconvenient because of this way you spend much more time debugging your application manually and that's bad. Therefore, big applications always have large test suits. There can be uh, hundreds of tests to cover each part of, of a big application. And yeah, this um, also relates to the need to constantly test each feature manually, of course, we cannot afford this in many cases, especially when we are talking about an application that is being developed by one or two programmers. It's impossible to, you know, write a code and then go ahead and manually test every page of your website, maybe, or of your web service. It's very complicated and it's impossible and... Uh, no one actually does that. But, well, of course, maybe at some point of time you may still need to hire some better tester, maybe. But all in all, having a nice testing suit, it's quite okay as well. Uh, next, um, you can code your application feature by feature. You can focus only on one task. And this nicely relates to the Agile methodology that is being used by many developers. Uh, this methodology tells us that um, we develop uh, one feature at a time, usually, and we focus on creating some um, working part of your application. So, like, uh, Agile introduces iterations. Each iteration uh, usually lasts one or two weeks, and during one iteration you code only one feature. And by the end of this iteration you try to uh, deliver some um, part of your product, of your project, to the stakeholders and uh, display to them that th uh, that's the result of my work for one or two weeks. So yeah, um, basically TDD nicely um, uh, plays nicely with Agile as well. And yeah, uh, also uh, there is um, this uh, saying by Dijkstra, which basically means that even though uh, tests can display the presence of some bugs, uh, they can never show the absence of their bugs. Because even if you have a large test suite, it doesn't mean you have no bugs at all. Unfortunately, it's quite impossible to test each and every case, and especially uh, it's important when testing edge cases, of course. But, uh, well, you may still end up in a situation when your application does have some bugs, even though your tests are all green, meaning that all tests are passing. So please remember about this fact as well. And also there is yet another concept of BDD. It's, um, it means behavior-driven development. It uh, uh, relates closely to the TDD. And behavior-driven development means that we are focusing on the behavior of some application, not on the structure of our code. Because usually uh, stakeholders, uh, clients, shall we say, they are interested that the application works correctly. 
and they usually they don't know and they they are not interested in how exactly this uh, project works uh, for example you buy a car and you want to, I don't know, this car to, you want to drive this car somewhere. You want this car to, I don't know, be quite fast. Uh, it should not consume too many fuel and so and so and so. But still you are not interested, well, usually you are not interested in how exactly this car was created. So about all internals of this car, you are not interested about it unless you are a specialist. And the same applies to the project in terms of uh, programming. So stakeholders, they just want the application to work correctly, to be fast, to be scalable, to be maintainable, but they are not interested what, uh, I don't know, what database adapter are you using or stuff like that. So that's behavior-driven development. Of course, we are going to see some examples in the upcoming sections, but for now I'm going to just say that usually tests are written in a form of scenarios. And scenarios usually contain three main words. The first is given that sets some initial context. For example, given I am logged in as an administrator or given the, well, given I am an ordinary user or something like that. So we set some context and then we say when. So when I visit uh, the main page of the website, when I open administration maybe page, when I try to leave a comment or something like that. And lastly there is a then. Then explains what should happen. So it sets our expectation. So that's how we can uh, basically um, explain uh, the behavior of our application. So when I do something, then something should happen. That's basically the behavior, right? And if this scenario is like green, if it succeeds, it means that in general uh, some feature works as expected. And once again later we will of course write some tests like that. So well, let's wrap up uh, this, um, this video for now, let's proceed to the next one and discuss various types of tests that we are going to write throughout this course. So stay tuned and see you soon. Hello and welcome again to the TDD Basics course on Edonics. My name is Ilya and this is section 2, where we are laying some foundation and discussing some theory behind test-driven development. In this lecture I am going to present you three types of tests that we are going to write throughout this course. The first type of tests is a unit test. And that's the simplest type. That means um, that we are writing some code that covers only a small area of our application. So speaking about Rails, uh, that can be like uh, testing a model, testing some route, or maybe testing some controller action, something like that. That's unit test. And unit tests uh, should not, should never rely on each other. And they are usually run in some random order to avoid situations uh, when like one test always relies on each other but when you break the sequence of running the tests uh, they fail so this should never happen and they are independent also those tests are pretty small they are pretty simple uh, well because <laughs> because they cover only some small area for uh, an application so they are not meant to be like big or very complex and well that's pretty important especially when you have like hundreds of tests because of course uh, the more tests you have uh, the um the more time you should spend uh, waiting for your tests to complete and maybe for small applications uh, that can be like i don't know 10 seconds or 30 seconds but for big application that can be of course like a minute or two or five and um, you don't want of course to wait like 10 minutes for your tests to complete 
Uh, and of course you should always focus on some edge cases when writing your tests. That's important. Uh, especially that's important when like working with date and time because you know different uh, countries like have different time zones and it's quite important to see that all the time zone stuff um, works properly and so and so and so so yeah edge cases it's important because uh, you cannot test each and every case so like when you are testing for some um, like a user enters an email and you can't possibly test each uh, test each and every email in the world and see um, if the test uh, fails or succeeds with each and every email. But still you can think of some edge cases and see like what happens if a user enters an email without an at symbol or what happens if a user enters an email without a domain part like .com or I don't know .ru and uh, so and so and so. So those are edge cases and of course we will see examples of that as well. The next type of our tests is integration tests. And integration tests, as the name implies, are meant to ensure that various parts of your application works together as in one entity. So they like um, if a unit test uh, only focuses on a small part of an application, then integration test um, works with a different part of your application. So it's like focusing on the interaction between different components. Like, uh, once again, if we are talking about Rails, we can test like uh, like a route works when I visit some page that a controller works properly and uh, like takes the proper data from the database and that the view works as well and renders the content appropriately. That is going to be like integration test in case of Rails. And uh, obviously this type of tests is uh, very important as well, because you can have lots of unit tests and various parts of your application may work uh, correctly as well as individual components, but uh, they may not work uh, correctly as a whole, as an entity. That's why writing integration tests is important as well, and we will write some of those tests too. And lastly, there are functional tests. Functional tests, uh, as you see, they are um, a part of the quality assurance workflow. So it means uh, that we are testing uh, that an application behaves uh, properly and the, uh, well, given some input, we receive the proper output. And um, our application in this case behaves like a black box. So we give something to this black box, we put something into the black box, then some magic happens and we basically are not interested in what this magic is, how it works. We only check that the output is correct. So you place like a hat into the black box and as a result you get a hair or something like that. Uh, so that's our functional tests. Uh, so, once again, yeah, basically it means that we check that some component works according to some expectations, to some specifications. And uh, functional tests, for example, it's uh, like testing uh, your mailers in terms of we give some input to our mailer and we check that an email is being sent to some proper address with some proper content maybe that uh, CC and BCC fields are set correctly and something like that. So those can be functional tests and we are going to write some of them as well. So those are three types of tests that I wanted to show you. Uh, that's simply a theory for now. Let's now proceed to the next video of um, this uh, section and talk about uh, testing in uh, Rails. So, see you there! 
Hello and welcome again to the TDD Basics course on Edonix. My name is Ilya and this is section 2 Hello TDD. In this lecture I am going to show you uh, and uh, give you some theory about test driven development in Rails. So, of course, Rails loves testing, so it was built with uh, like <laughs> testing in mind, shall we say, and it has uh, the default testing framework already integrated, so you don't need to use any additional third-party gems to test your Rails applications, and this framework is called Minitest. As the name implies, Minitest is quite simple and small solution, but still it is very powerful and it is used to, to test each and every part of your Rails application, starting from routes and controllers to views, mailers and uh, all other components, including some system tests as well. So, you can uh, read more about Minitest and testing Rails application in general using those two links that quite uh, that are quite useful, but of course, well, in this course we are going to use Minitest extensively and you are going to see lots of examples of uh, using this solution. So, um, the default location for all your tests is the directory called test. It is uh, being present in the root of your Rails project. And initially, when you only create, when you just create your Rails application, this test directory is being created automatically. And it, later, it is going to contain folders like models, controllers, mailers. And of course, as you well can guess, each uh, folder is going to contain tests for various parts of your application. So yeah, the, for those files are grouped properly so that you don't uh, like so you don't mess your files together. Uh, also, there uh, is going to be a file called test helper that is going to be created automatically and it contains some default settings for your tests, but you can tweak it as necessary. For example, include maybe some additional um, solutions for your test and like maybe to to make screenshots uh, during <clears throat> during the uh, running of your tests or something like that. And uh, of course you can run Rails test command uh, to run your uh, full test suite. In the previous versions of Rails, before Rails 5, the command was rake test, but starting from Rails 5, all rake commands moved under Rails namespace. So now you can simply say a Rails test. And of course remember that all your tests are being run under test environment. And of course, you, as you remember, there are three default environments. Uh, that is production, development and, well, basically test. And uh, another thing to remember is that under the test environment you have a separate database and this database is usually cleared out so you cannot rely on uh, results of the previous tests uh, because well the database is cleared out between tests and after the test was run. But we will discuss this in a more detail in the upcoming episodes. So. Uh, of course, Minitest is not the only option, it's like a built-in solution, but you can use some third-party solutions that are quite popular as well. And if you have done some test testing before with Rails, you probably know about RSpec. And RSpec is a third-party solution and it is immensely popular, popular solution nowadays. Uh, many, many developers use it and many books actually focus on RSpec. And actually my previous course about Ruby on Rails was focusing on RSpec as well. 
But for this course, I decided to use the built-in solution to reduce complexity because, well, all in all, it doesn't really matter what solution are we going to use. Because in this course, I just wanted to present you some basics behind TDD, uh, behind like different types of tests and uh, to make things a bit more simple, we are going to stick with the mini test and we are not going to cover our spec in this course, but I'm still planning to record another course focusing on our spec, specifically discussing all ins and outs of this framework. And all in all, I have nothing against this uh, testing framework it's really cool but well uh, still many um, developers well not many developers but some at least developers uh, tell that uh, sometimes using our spec may be an overkill because mini test is quite okay as well it's fast you don't need to introduce any additional gems and so and so and so for example i have uh, my friend uh, who was a member of railscore team some years ago and he prefers mini Mini tests saying that our spec is well in many cases you can stay away from our spec and it is not really needed to test your application but of course it's up to you so you can stick with our spec if you'd like uh, the next uh, popular solution is cucumber cucumber is um, is a tool for BDD behavior driven development that we were, we were discussing a bit in the previous video. Cucumber is less popular than RSpec. Maybe you haven't heard about this solution before. Uh, basically, Cucumber relies on scenarios. So, as you remember, I said that behavior-driven development relies on scenarios and Cucumber does just that. You have like lots of scenarios that are written like in pure English. So anyone, any stakeholder, even if he is not tech savvy, can read those scenarios and understand what are specifications for this application. He may, be suggest, he may suggest his own maybe scenario or maybe check the existing ones. But of course, under the hoods, each scenario is powered by Ruby code, so it's not like some magic. Of course, each and every scenario under the behind the curtains has uh, some uh, code that makes uh, this scenario work. Uh, Cucumber also can be an overkill uh, because uh, the tests, the scenarios, uh, they can be quite uh, slow. But all in all, I love Cucumber too, and I hope to record a course about it uh, on it as well sometime in future. So, well, bear this solution in mind. Maybe you uh, try it yourself sometime in future, and well, once again, that's a nice solution as well. And, uh, well, the last thing to note here is uh, that if you don't want your application to have the default testing framework uh, in place, you can provide uh, this T flag uh, when creating your application and it is going to say to the Rails generator, uh, please do not include mini test into my application and do not create the test directory. So this command uh, can be quite handy when you want to equip uh, your um, your application with a cucumber or R spec, but not with mini test. So as you understood, Rails loves testing, and if you open any pull request, for example, I've opened some random pull request under the Rails repo on GitHub, you are going to see that uh, there is a continuous integration check uh, um, that is powered by Travis, and it basically means that all tests uh, are passing correctly. So whenever someone sends a pull request, uh, a pull request, uh, those tests are being run in the background and then you can see the result of those tests and if something is um, incorrect, if some test um, uh, resulted in an error, you can easily see what this error was, so what uh, is the failing test. So here you are going to see that like uh, various Ruby versions are being used when running those tests. Various adapters like Postgres, 
so and so and so and you can click on some specific set and here you are going to see the log for all the jobs and you are going to see like all those green dots those are tests so each dot is a test so you see that there are like many thousands, thousands and thousands of tests that are being run and uh, which means that Rails is really heavily tested because well this framework is being used by millions of people and if something goes wrong and if <clears throat> for, for example uh, the Rails team uh, releases a new version that have some breaking, uh, some tests that are broken that's indeed very bad because it can introduce some side effects, some bugs so uh, of course core team always uh, watches for um, the tests and they check that the tests are green so that's how basically the running of the tests looks like and we are going to see this output similar well to what you see here uh, throughout this course of course we are not going to write thousands of tests luckily because it is going to well, require lots of time but all in all we are going to write tests similar to those so let's wrap up this episode for now, let's proceed to the next video and then we are going to learn about writing the tests for your models. So stay tuned and see you really soon. Hello and welcome once again to the TDD Basics course on Odeonics. My name is Ilya, this is section 2, lecture 4. We are going to prepare our Rails application for the other videos of this course. So let me switch to my terminal and I'm going to use Rails version 5.1.2 for this course. Well, version 5.1.3 is going to be released quite soon as well, but for now it's only a release candidate. It might contain some bugs still, so I'm not going to use it in this course. So, <clears throat> let's start with um, creating a new Rails application. It's, uh, well, it doesn't really matter what name uh, we're going to use for this app. I'm going to say just TDD basics. You may call it anything else Let's press enter. So it's going to create as you see The test directory for us that we were talking about in the previous uh, episode Also, it is going to install some gems for us <clears throat> And after it is done, let me open this folder here and you know what I'm going to cut those files and place it right inside of this folder here and replace all this stuff and remove this folder like this all right let me open my ID and go to the git ignore and firstly I'm going to ignore my idea directory because it contains some configuration for my RubyMine integrated um, integrated editor and of course I don't want it uh, to be pushed to github all right now let's open the gem file um, specifically we are interested uh, in those uh, groups like development and test and especially in this one that contains gems for both development and testing and one thing to note is that now capybara is being included by default if you have come from rails 4 or maybe even rail 3 uh, well capybara was not included in the previous versions of rails but well in rails 5.1 capybara is here it is present in the gem file and well capybara is used uh, for integration tests and we are going to utilize it in the upcoming episodes but all in all it is being used to simulate users behavior for example in your tests you can simulate that a user enters something in a text box or he checks some uh, check boxes or he presses some buttons or links and so and so and so so capybara is utilized for behavior driven development basically 
Uh, and uh, selenium is used in conjunction with capybar. Um, usually it is used to provide us with um, some environment where we can run our integration tests. So it like simulates um, it is also used to simulate users behavior but i think we are not going to use selenium we are using we are going to use poltergeist but uh, for now let's leave it be here so that's uh, those are the differences inside the gem file and uh, next we can switch to the test folder and here we are going to see all the folders uh, that we were talking about and here is also the file called test helper that as you already know contains all the configuration for your tests so here we can see that the environment file is uh, being required also the rails uh, test help is being required and here are some configuration is being set so this file is quite thin for now and here we can uh, require some additional maybe files or provide some additional configuration as well so next there are some empty folders that contain uh, tests for controllers for helpers some integration tests some modal test mailer test so as you see all of them are empty for now of course and if you now try to to run a rails test command you're going to see that it tries to run our tests but it has found none and of course uh, there are no errors or no failures and stuff like that a note by the way this seed option which means that tests are being run in a random order by default so this seed here is going to be different each time you run your tests. So you see the number is different and it is being used to run your tests in a random order. And as I've already said in the previous video, running your tests in a random order is quite important because tests should not rely on each other. Uh, all right, let me, you know what, let me do bundle update just to make sure that my gems are up to date because I haven't updated some gems installed in my PC for quite some time. No, everything is quite okay. So that's it. That's it. We have prepared our um, application for our course. So now it... It has some generic structure and in the next section we are going to talk about modal testing in Rails. We are going to talk also about fixtures that are used to load sample data. So stay tuned and see you in the next section.